Welcome to Total Spectrum Spotlight, an informative look and an insightful discussion of today's legislative issues and political trends. Hi, I'm Eric Paulson, and joining me today on Total Spectrum Spotlight is Kirsten Cinema, United States Senator from the great state of Arizona. Prior to being elected to the U.S. Senate in 2018, Senator Cinema served in the State House and State Senate, but I got to know her very well when we served together as colleagues in the U.S. House of Representatives. Senator, we appreciate you joining us today on Total Spectrum Spotlight. Great to see you again. Well, Eric, it's great to be with you. Good to see you too. Good. You know, it's interesting because some seem surprised that you've staked out some independent positions without always voting, you know, strictly party line. But I've always known you to be someone who's willing to work across the aisle to find solutions and make decisions, of course, on what criteria is best for Arizona. You know, you and I work together on some military service dog legislation, for instance. But, you know, maybe talk a little bit about how difficult it is to be principled and an independent thinker in a body that tends to always fall into party line battles. Yeah. Well, you know, Eric, it is the easiest thing in the world for politicians to stay in their partisan corners or to line up on their respective sides of every partisan battle. But declaring that bipartisanship is dead is the easy way to go. What's harder is actually getting out of our comfort zones, finding common ground with unlikely allies and forming coalitions that can achieve durable, lasting results. And lasting results, rather than temporary victories that are destined to be reversed, undermine the certainty that America's families and employees depend on. So the best way to achieve lasting results is to work with bipartisan cooperation. Now, I understand that bipartisanship seems outdated to many pundits, but the difficult work of collaboration is what Arizonans and what Americans expect. And I still believe that it is the best way to identify realistic solutions. So instead of escalating to all or nothing political battles that result in no action or in radical federal policy reversals. Yeah, listen, uh, you know, you deservedly, rightfully so, receive credit for being a refreshing departure from that party line pattern. You know, what do you think needs to happen to get more members to actually walk that walk of building consensus, of collaborating, working together? Are there certain issues that you envision that might be ripe for getting that bipartisan cooperation you mentioned? Well, you know, Eric, for years, America's politics have spiraled steadily downward, right? So it's increasingly better and it's more tribal partner, uh, partisanship. And our democracy has been strained as a result of that. So these deepening divisions are driven in part by political talking heads, right? And the outside groups who benefit from extremism in both parties. So I believe our divisions will only be healed by robust, sustained strategies that put aside party labels and focus on our democracy. Because the challenges we face are bigger than party affiliation. So rather than talk about specific issues, I think we must commit to a long-term approach. An approach that is as serious as the problems that we seek to solve. An approach that prioritizes listening and understanding. An approach that embraces making progress on shared priorities and finding common ground on the areas or issues where we might have differing or diverse views. So we need more leaders who are willing to buck party politics to deliver these lasting results on every issue. You know, you mentioned the long-term outlook uh, and the importance of that. You know, Arizona enjoys a relatively strong economic outlook, but like everywhere else, businesses have struggled with the tight labor market, supply chain issues, higher prices, and they do always worry that tax policy will not remain stable and consistent for their planning purposes for the long term. But do you see any tax changes coming after the election that might come up in the lame duck session, for instance? Well, this will be no surprise to anyone, but I've made clear for some time that I will only support policies that help Arizona's economic growth and competitiveness. So in the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act, I was insistent that the package did not include policies that would hurt Arizona's small or mid-sized businesses, whether it was through direct taxation or inhibiting our businesses' abilities to invest in technology, in people, and in growth. You know, in Arizona, 99.5% of our businesses are small businesses. And at a time of rising interest rates, continued inflation, and slowing economic growth, we should not harm our businesses' competitiveness by raising taxes and disincentivizing investments. So that's why I'm looking to a potential end-of-year tax bill as another opportunity to get something done for Arizona's business and work and our workers. So right now I'm working with Senators Hassan and Senator Young and a coalition of bipartisan members 
to ensure that businesses can fully deduct their research and development mm. investments in a given year. Now, this is critical to many energy or life science or manufacturing businesses in Arizona, and that'll make sure that we continue to drive innovation forward. I'm also working to extend the enhanced child tax credits. You know, those were part of the American Rescue Plan last year, and these credits were crucial to keeping Arizona families out of poverty, and they provided a lifeline to working families. You know, in a 50-50 Senate, every Senator's voice matters, and all continue to stand up on behalf of Arizona employers and protect Arizona's economic growth. You, know, you talked about that 50-50 Senate and another issue which of course has challenges is border security and immigration, which are more than just flash news stories. They're real issues that you've identified needs attention, um, saying that the current flow of migrants is unsustainable, for instance. But you know, what sorts of things have to happen to get that broad-based immigration reform to actually happen? You know, in Arizona, we've been paying the price for the federal government's failure to break our to fix our broken immigration system for decades, right? So what's frustrating for us is when politicians in Washington retreat to partisan corners instead of doing the really hard and necessary work of finding meaningful solutions, we find that Arizona communities are shouldering the burden. So those of us who live in border states know, and we've seen up close, that strong border security, healthy cross-border trade, and a fair immigration system all go hand in hand. We can and we must achieve all three. So tackling immigration reform will require both sides to actually focus on solutions instead of scoring political points. They haven't been good at that lately. So I'm calling on folks to work together to secure the border, to keep our community safe, and to ensure the fair and humane treatment of migrants. We wish you the best on that, absolutely. Here's a final question for you. I know your time is limited, but you've served in both the House and now in the Senate. These bodies are obviously very different. Uh, in the Senate, you've got the filibuster rule, having a 60 vote necessity for moving issues forward in debate. Any other differences that you've noticed or that have surprised you when you've made that transition from one body to the other? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, one aspect of the Senate that really stood out to me is the importance of relationships and building honest and meaningful connections with folks on both sides of the aisle. In order to keep these relationships, and of course, in order to remain a trustworthy person, you've got to keep your word to your colleagues and all that you do. And when we require 60 votes, it means that we've got to be bipartisan in everything we do. So that honesty, that trustworthiness, keeping your word, depending on each other, matters even more in the Senate than it did in the House. Thank you so much again for spending some time with us today. It's great to see you again, really is. It really is great to see you, Eric, and thanks so much for having me today. Great, and to all of our viewers, we'll see you next time on Total Spectrum Spotlight. Thank you for watching Total Spectrum Spotlight. For more information about Total Spectrum, please visit us at totalspectrumsga.com. Total Spectrum, strategies uniquely focused on your success.